You know, some people don't like Miami. They talk about this year's hotel with next year's prices and last year's food. But for me, there's no place quite like it. There's water skiing, fishing, swimming, sailing, a climate that's... Or something she didn't catch that fish it leapt into the boat and said honey adopt me or go fishing with her you don't need bait now where was i oh yes sir hey dan dan morrow dan nice to see you well how's the famous scoundrel chasing criminal catching simon templar <laughs> came to Miami Beach to go fishing? No banks to rob? Hmm? I mean, no bank robberies? No criminals? You sound disappointed. That has been a big jump in smuggling through here lately. Dan, don't look at me. I'm on vacation. Now, where's this charter boat captain of yours? His name is Patsy O'Kevin. He's a skipper of the Colleen. Come on down and meet him. Hi, Patsy. How's the old sea dog? Still getting my feet wet. And to what do I owe the honor of a visit from the United States Coast Guard? I have a friend here who's looking for you. Have you now? Simon Templer, Patsy O'Kevin. Aren't you the man people call the saint? Well, uh, amongst all the things, yes. Well, pleased to meet you, I'm sure. Nice meeting you. This lazy no good is my mate, Des. Des? Des. Well, why would Simon Templer be looking for a hard-working, God-fearing charter boat captain like myself? I want to do some fishing over Bimini Way. Is that all? Why, well, isn't that enough? I was mighty sorry I am not to be able to oblige you. Fact is, I'm booked up for three weeks. No bum free day? Afraid not. Not until after the end of the month. Been booked by a couple named Duck Rose. Uh, you might try Captain Dutcher out of Fort Lauderdale. He's a good skipper. Ah, well, thanks all the same. Oh, before you go now, at least you'll do me the honor of having a beer with me. Uh, we accept. Greatest of pleasure. Whereabouts are you staying, Mr. Templer? Uh, the Vista Del Mar. Are oh, you now? Well, that's a coincidence. My clients are staying there, too. Well, at least the wife is. Hello? Hello, Patsy. Simon Templer? Here? At the Vista Del Mar? Well, whoever said Miami was dull in the summer. <laughs> Thanks, Patsy. Bye. Kevin's stuck this morning, aren't you? That's right. My name is Simon Templer. Mine's Gloria Acros. I know. How? 
I saw you getting mail at the desk this morning. I asked the clerk. Why? Take another look in the mirror. Well, if you're not going to ask me to sit at your table, I'd ask you to join me at the bar. Would you? I'd much rather be at the bar, but they don't serve unescorted ladies. Ma'am. Perfect timing, madam. I just finished it. Well, what's that? The frozen daiquiri. Oh, I'll have a same. That's what I thought. I made two of them. What shall we drink to? If you could bear it, I'd like to drink to an early dinner. I'm absolutely famished. To an early dinner and a late night. It must be very late. Let's not think about the time. Hmm? I'm afraid I have to. I have to be up at seven in the morning. Oh? Why? Patsy O'Kevin's taking me to Bimini. It's a nice spot. Like it? I love it. What are you doing in Miami? Oh, nothing. A vacation, some fishing. Nothing in particular? Well, I was planning on renting Patsy's boat, but you beat me to it. So I was told. It's a pretty big boat. Would you like to come with me to Bimini? Anywhere. Can you get up early? The crack of dawn. I think I ought to tell you I have a husband in Bimini. Well, I'm broad-minded. You are? I think about nothing else. Thanks, Des. Okay. Now we can relax and enjoy the morning. The rest is up to the fish. You make it seem so easy, Simon. My husband worries and fusses from the minute he comes on board. Well, maybe fishing is just not his sport. He worries about everything. He's a very nervous man. Hey! There's a marlin out there! the bait. Well, he sees it all right. He's smelling it. He's being cautious. He's got it. No, not yet. He's just ramming it. He thinks it's alive. He wants to kill it. Now he's drifting back to find out what happened. Can't you just reel him in? You kidding? Reeling a fighting fish weighing 100 pounds on the end of a 36 thread line? You'd break it in a second. If he can snap it that easily, why doesn't he? The fish doesn't know it's a 36 thread line. He doesn't know anything except he wants to get away. The trick is never to resist his pull with any more pressure than the line will stand. How long? 
long will this take? Well, that depends on the fish. snapping a 36 red line. What happened? That's it. I did it. There's no one to blame but myself. If you'd be kinder to me than I deserve, would you just cut me through before you throw me overboard to the sharks? Forget it, Patsy. Yes, but what happened? I fumbled through in the clutches from reverse to forward. He went right underneath the boat. The line fouled the propellers. Simon, me boy, I'm sorry. Maybe it's just as well, Patsy. Mrs. Uckrose is getting a little worried about the time. The devil of it is we're farther from Vimini now than when we left Miami. Clinton is going to be furious. She is over three hours late. Something's gone wrong. Do you hear me, Vincent? I hear you, Mr. Akros. Well, say something. Suggest something. Why don't you call the Miami police and have them send out an alarm? Vincent, I'm a very sick man. Stop agitating me. Stop agitating yourself. I'm just as worried as you are. But there is nothing we can't do until we know the score. So calm down. You're driving me nuts. Relax, have a drink. Drinking is bad for my ulcer. And worrying is bad for your heart. Waiter. Bring me a double scotch and a large glass of milk mixed. Very good, sir. I thought milk was bad for your liver. Bimini Harbor until you're practically in it. Don't tell me I saw it for myself. She's finally rounding the point. I knew you were getting all worked up for nothing. What's in the name of... She must be out of her mind. Now what? She's got someone with her, a man. Let me have a look. You can't trust any of them, can you? She better have a good story, that's all. Just a minute, Vincent. This is my problem and I'll handle it myself. Is that clear? Okay, Patsy, she's all tied off. Thank you, Simon. You make a fine first bit to some lucky skipper. Thanks. If that's enough, I may take you up on it. Maybe I'd better do the explaining to your husband. Oh, please don't. You don't know him. Gloria! Do you realize you are four hours late? Where were you? What were you doing? Who the devil is this? If you'll just calm down, darling, I'll explain. Don't darling me. And don't expect me to be calm after waiting all day in the blazing heat and worrying myself sick. What were you doing on my boat? Correction, Mr. Uckrose, that is not your boat. It is mine as long as I am paying for it. And I am not paying for it for your benefit. Well, in that case, you be my guest. Huh? I demand full explanation. Now, oh, watch Get your hands off, Mr. Uckrose, buddy. Uh, uh! Where is the old man? Taking a bath. Don't you believe in knocking? When did you start worrying about that? You're being a bore. Don't give me that phony routine. Come on, 
baby, I'm freeze. Take your hands off me. We'll be out in a minute. You're sure it's him you're worrying about? You are a fool, Vincent. Ah, Vincent. I'm glad you dropped in. I want to have a chat with you. Well, I want a drink. See you downstairs. What's the matter with her? Vincent, we made a terrible blunder today. We did? Yes, you and I. We nearly ruined everything. You mean that character Gloria brought back from Miami? That character, Vincent, is Simon Templer, the saint. <laughs> Let's get rid of him. That may be not so easy. He's a tough customer. He doesn't scare me. Next time I'll know how to handle him. There won't be any next time. Let's not be idiotic. What's so idiotic about getting a guy before he gets you? It's dangerous. We don't need it. We can finish up and get out of here before he knows what's going on. Maybe he knows already. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. Let's find out before we go off half cock. Come on. Mr. Templer, could you possibly excuse my outrageous behavior if I can explain what brought it on? You were sore. I was in agony. You see, I'm a very sick man. And Why don't you have a drink with me and let bygones be? Only if you agree to have dinner with us. I'd love to. What do you have? I'd like one of those. A large glass of milk and a double scotch. Mixed. Very good, sir. I insist on explaining. You see, it was so hot this morning, and I was so worried about my wife. Mr. Ockros, we all got a little overheated at times. At least nobody was killed. By the way, who was that fellow? Oh, that was Vincent Inusho. Vincent is what you might call... <clears throat> Thanks. Cheers. Cheers. Awful stuff. I need the milk for my houses. Oh, Vincent, yes. Well, he's a kind of all-around assistant to me, you see. In Europe, he drives my car, supervises my domestic staff. We live in Monte Carlo. Oh, what are you doing over here? We come over here every summer for the fishing. That's quite a trip. Does Vincent always come with you? No, this is the first time. I suppose when he doesn't have servants to supervise or cars to drive, he gets restless. Oh, please don't misjudge him on the basis of an unfortunate incident, Mr. Templer. Under that rough exterior, he's really rather sweet. I admit he's quick-tempered. That's his Italian blood. But he can be a fiercely loyal and devoted friend. All right, I'm sold on Vincent. Where is he so we can kiss and make up? He'll be joining us for dinner. He's probably still getting dressed. Or dried. one big advantage. In Monte Carlo, I work. Here, I'm on vacation, practically. I have a feeling I've seen Vincent before. I get around, Mr. Templer, uh, from one end of Monte Carlo to the other, uh, when he lets me off the leash. 
Well, I was thinking of somewhere much closer home. Have you ever been to Chicago? I never even been to the States. Oh, where'd you pick up the accent? It's great. Yeah, it was great when I picked it up from the GIs in Naples. But the words I picked up with it. I had to study the language for years to find out which words not to use. <laughs> It's been a lovely evening, but I'm afraid it's bedtime for us. I want to get out early in the morning. Come on, Vincent. Well, I never go to bed early, but if you feel like turning in, I... Three gentlemen. Not one of them cares how I feel. How do you feel? I'd like another brandy. Do you mind my keeping your wife company? Of course I might. But since Vincent and I must get some sleep, just don't stay up too late, darling. Promise. Good night, Temper. Good night. Come on, Vincent. Why is everybody so cooperative all of a sudden? It's not cooperation, it's exhaustion. He's a very tired man. Wait a two more brandies, please. He's not the sort of husband I would have imagined for you. Is he better or worse? Both. He's a very kind man. And unusually intelligent, but he's such a wild. Do you know why we live in Monte Carlo? Don't tell me he's a gambler. Clinton? He's never taken a chance in his life. He picked Monte Carlo because it's legal there and not to pay income tax. You sound kind of annoyed. I'm not annoyed, I'm bored. All right, then, what shall we drink to? Not to be bored. For just a little while. You're imagining things. I didn't imagine that crack about Chicago. It doesn't mean anything. Not to you, because it's my neck that's in the sling. Get this straight, Vincent. If your neck is in any sling, so is mine. And the same thing applies the other way around. Why don't we get rid of him? I'll do it. Because it involves unnecessary risk, the one thing I've always avoided. This operation is foolproof. I've spent years working on it. Let's not wreck it now by panicking. With luck, we can be out of it in a couple of days and forget about the saint. By next year, he'll have forgotten about us. Supposing he catches on before we can clear out? If that happens, we'll handle him your way. I really must go. Good night, Gloria. I like you. <laughs> Feelings mutual. It's no good pretending I'm a devoted wife to Clinton. But you are a wife. I know, I'm sorry. I threw myself at you. Good night, Simon. Mrs. Uckrose? 
No thanks, Des. You have one. People get seasick. Gloria! Gloria, come here! Gloria! Gloria! Gloria, come here! I'm dying. Clinton, it's as calm as a mill pond. Tell Patsy to turn back. But we've only been out an hour. Tell Patsy to go back to Bimini! <laughs> Okay, Patty? All right, we will. Good morning, Patsy. Huh. Simon, my boy, you're welcome. Come aboard. It's a proud man I am to shake the hand that knocked that spaghetti merchant into the drink yesterday. He can ask me for anything, except the Colleen herself. Well, I'll settle for a nice can of cold beer. With a fisherman like Okaroos for a client, my fish locker looks like a brewery. Only had knocked him into the water along with the Italian. Another rough morning? There's not a drop of fisherman's blood in him, Simon. All he'll use is the heaviest tackle I've got. So that as long as the hook holds, all he has to do is haul it in. If I'd had Derek and a power when she'd use that. Or oh, what's more, we get seasick in a bathtub. Was Vincent alone? Yeah. What do you know about him? Nothing. Except that I don't like the cut of his jib. Somehow or other, he doesn't fit in with the arc roses. How do you mean? Oh, I don't know. You think they're up to something? Or something crooked. Crooked? It's just a hunch, Patsy. It's funny how a man with a guilty conscience winds up giving himself away. I came down here purely to relax and catch a few fish. The Uckroses have been acting as if I wanted to catch them. How? Oh. Little lies, contradictions. What are they trying to cover up? Oh, I have no idea. But you might get a hint from the glorious Gloria. She's getting thoroughly tired of Uckroses, as anyone can see. Only today she was saying how bored she is with his way of fishing. But he won't hear of me taking her out alone, if it's too rough for himself. What do you mean? A woman as ripe and ready for trouble as that one could be interesting in more ways than one. Patsy, my old shamrock, all I am interested in right now is an early lunch and a siesta. I'm not used to this hard life of loafing. I'm exhausted. Thanks for the beer. So long, Simon. I wondered if you'd care to join me for a swim. I'd love to join you for a swim. I'll meet you on the beach in five minutes. I'll settle for just joining. Why don't you shut the door? Well, what about your husband? He mightn't understand. He might follow you here and come bursting in with a revolver. And shoot you? He'd probably be acquitted. He had three double dikeries before lunch. He's snoring his head off. What room do you have? Twenty. Would you think me unduly nervous if I went along and listened to the snoring myself? Go ahead. In that case, I won't. But what about Brother Vincent? Supposing he notices something he thinks Clinton should know about. He had Dremamin on the boat. He could hardly keep his eyes open during lunch. It's nice to know someone who's so wide awake. It's nice to know someone who's so nice.
Simon, I'm leading him. Oh? Every time I look at him, I wonder why I married him. He's dull and drab and jealous. He's suspicious of everyone, even me. I can see how that would make life a little uncomfortable for you. You're so different, so strong. You're a man. Oh, Simon, this has happened so fast. Yes. I've fallen in love with you. I just can't help it. I've asked Clinton for a divorce. I said I was going to NASA tomorrow. Oh, Simon, come with me, please. I know it's impossible. Why? You know what happened when we arrived together. Imagine if we leave together. Wait, I've got it. There must be a charter plane service in Miami. Yes, out on the MacArthur Causeway. If you phone one now, there could be a plane here in an hour. You could tell everybody you've gone back to Miami. Then after the plane's taken off... Tell the pilot I've changed my mind. I wanted to be flown to NASA. Where you would meet me tomorrow. Yes, Simon. Oh, Clinton, I'll never guess we're going to meet. Please. Angel, you've got a deal. <laughs> Stop fussing. I've told you everything is under control. What makes you so sure of yourself? You should know. You think he believed you? I can be pretty convincing. As we all know only too well. Whose idea was it? Listen. See it? No. There it is. I didn't think it fall for it. Well, now that Mr. Temple is out of the way, we can get down to business. yourself, Simon. Well, Patsy, you're still swiping up Rose's beer, I see. You promise to hold your tongue if I give you a share of the spoils. That's the deal. Thanks, Patsy. What's the idea of the suitcase? You're not deserting us, are you? Let's go below. I'll tell you about it. After yourself. <clears throat> Where's Des? He's off. Spending the night with friends. Here. Your good health. Thanks. Well, did you talk to Gloria? Yes, I did. She wants me to meet her in Nassau tomorrow morning. Ah. Well, when are you leaving? I'm not. What? You're toning down that glorious, gorgeous dish? Not exactly. She wants me to meet her in Nassau tomorrow morning, but she doesn't have any intention of going. Are you sure? I'm positive. Oh, it was beautifully handled. I had to go ahead because if... She left first. There was always the risk that I might not follow. But why would you be pulling a dirty trick like that? Oh, to get me out of Bimini peacefully and quietly. But what in the name of heavens for? For fear of what I might find out. But do you honestly know of anything they're doing wrong? Not specifically at this moment. But they're up to something. Otherwise, they wouldn't go to all this trouble just to get me out of the way. Oh, I've seen it happen a dozen times. Panic and a guilty conscience make people put ropes around their necks. Simon, are you sure? Is it wise to credit them with all sorts of wickedness, when really they're just a bit soft in their head? Patsy, they're up to something. I know it. There's someone coming. You sit tight. Oh, it's you, Mr. Anusio. Mr. 
Mr. Akros wants the boat ready at six in the morning. It'll be ready any time he is. The hotel will pack a lunch unit and bother. I hope you'll be warning them about his delicate stomach. And he doesn't like your jokes either. That's all the more reason for telling him. Now, if you'll excuse me. He can relax. He's gone. But you know, Simon, if him and the Oak Roses are doing something illegal, I better be dropping them as clients before he get caught in their dirty schemes. No, Patsy, I want you to stick with them a little while longer. You may be able to help me. Oh, but how could a simple-minded sailor like myself be of help to a man of your own trade? I want them to think I went to Nassau. Why? Well, if they know I'm still here, they may try more drastic methods to get rid of me. You know a place where I can sleep for the night? I think I know the very place. A nice clean room and house run by a friend of my own. Come on, Simon. We'll show the conniving snakes a thing or two. This is my only vacancy, number five. Will this suit you, Simon? Oh, it's fine. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I'm in number three if you need me, sir. Breakfast is 7.30 to 9.30. Thank you. Good night. Good night, sir. Well, it's not fancy, but it's clean. Well, what's more, it's well off the beaten track. Patsy, keep an eye on him, will you? Don't worry, and I'll report everything. Good night to you, Simon. Good night. I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Sleep well. after midnight. So? Vincent's late. He should have been back an hour ago. Well, what do you want me to do about it? Nothing. You had your chance. Mr. Templer apparently found no difficulty resisting your charms. Well, just for the record, I've no difficulty in resisting your charms either. Tranquilizers. You eat them like popcorn. If you had my nerves, you'd understand. You get any more tranquil and you'll be paralyzed. Will you stop needling me? This is a darn delicate operation. All I get from you is complaints. All I get from Vincent is mistakes. Don't worry, he'll be back. Vincent is an aid and a Neapolitan idiot. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. Mr. Anusia, your position is extremely delicate. I'd suggest you cooperate. Drop dead. Where's your passport? 
A little bird has it. Have you a permit for this gun? <laughs> you fired it four times, under the impression that you were aiming it at Mr. Templer. Why? I'm not answering any questions till I see a lawyer. Take him away. Tell the inspector there'll be a charge of attempted murder. And now, Mr. Templer, I should very much like to know what's behind all this. The Ockroses are smuggling. Smuggling what? That I don't know. It has to be something a man could carry easily from Europe to Nassau. Well, that could be anything. Our Bahamian customs are very casual with the baggage of American tourists. It has to be small and valuable. Something that could be taken on a Miami charter boat, which would only get a casual going over if it were coming back from Bimini. I would say probably narcotics or jewelry. Yes, well, that's the problem of interest only to the United States customs. Oh, it was also of interest to me. Why? A laughing boy just took four shots at me. Apart from that, I have a friend in the U.S. Coast Guard. Well, that's up to you. But at the moment, the only item within my jurisdiction is this attempt on your life. How long has this Vincent fellow worked for Akros? I have no idea. But do you think he was working under orders? I'm sure of it. I'll fetch Akros in for questioning. That's a good idea. I'll take care of Mrs. Akros. Something's gone wrong, I can feel it. Well, you're the brains. Think of something. We'll leave for Monte Carlo the first thing in the morning. What about the shipment? We'll have to take it back with us. But Clinton, we're nearly broke. Which do you prefer, poverty or prison? Do you think Vincent's been caught? I don't know, but if he has, we'll deny everything. We'll hang it all on him. When the police find out that he was deported from Chicago, they'll take our word against this. Are you Mr. Clinton Akros? Yes, I am. Superintendent Marsh, Nassau Police. Is uh, something wrong? I'd like you to come to police headquarters, please. Why? I want to ask you some questions. You can ask him here. I could, but I don't intend to. But it's three o'clock in the morning. I'm aware of the time. If I haven't made myself clear, Mr. Akros, I'm arresting you. But it's ridiculous. On what charge? Conspiracy with intent to murder. And please don't waste my time. This is a complete nonsense. I've been here in this room with my wife all evening. I don't want to use force, Mr. Arkrose. Now, will you come, please? I'd like to put on the shirt. Well, it's not really necessary. It's a warm climate. And we're fairly informal at headquarters. I'll be back. Not tonight, I'm afraid. I want to go to Miami now. At this hour? It's the middle of the night. The Colleen is chartered on a 24-hour basis. I want to cast off right now. Will you, will you for heaven's sake, get out of here, woman. Give me a chance to get on me clothes. Well, hurry up, then. But this size is a little difficult, but I managed. You frighten the daylights out of me. Oh, me and frighten you? When you love me so much? I I'll tell Patsy you're on board. You wouldn't. I must say, I've got a hand into you. It was beautifully done. Well, almost. Simon, what is this? 
What are you talking about? Oh, your first big mistake. It was in Miami. You were too friendly, too fast. Your guilty conscience wouldn't let you accept the very simple fact that I really and truly wanted to go to Bimini for the fishing. You thought I was on the trail of this uh, racket, Jerry. What racket? You must be dreaming. Oh, no, I'm mad. I get kind of annoyed when people start shooting at me. In fact, even thinking about it makes my blood boil. Why don't we go upstairs? Let's go. Cool. Simon, where did you come from? How did you get on board? Through the fire hatch while you were asleep. But why? What's going on? I don't know what he's talking about. He's got some wild idea we're smuggling something. Simon, surely you're joking. I'm not. This is my boat, and if you have any suspicions, I've a right to know them. You're right, Patsy. Brother Vincent tried to kill me tonight. Saints preserve us. Well, that double-dealing son of a murderer. Why? Well, that's what the Bahama police are trying to find out. They're holding Vincent and Mr. Uckrose. No. Is this true? If it is, I don't know anything about it. Simon, you're surely not telling me the Uckroses were using the collie to sneak contraband into the States. Well, they sure weren't peddling it in Bimini. But how could they get it aboard my boat without me knowing it? Carry it in that pocket. You never search anyone. Oh, Patsy, he's crazy. Mrs. Uckrose, I'll thank you to go below and say no more. Simon Templer's not a man to accuse people unjustly. <laughs> I might have expected it. I knew right away they were the kind of clients I'd like to be rich enough to turn down. Patsy, it takes all kinds. Wants it. Until the effect of all this whiskey. I'll get your beer. Hey, you, this one's higher than Mount Everest. Don't! And why not? It's way over the hill. It's mine and I want it. What are you going to do with it? We've got a trophy room in Monte Carlo. This isn't a trophy room. <laughs> You've got to be kidding. Happy! <laughs> Patsy, you really insist on giving yourself away, don't you? When Dan Morrow introduced us and told you that I was looking for you, you went as white as a sheet. You couldn't believe that I wanted to go to Bimini purely for the fishing either. Now you try to climb me at the worst possible psychological moment. Go on, get back to the wheel, take us on to Miami. from the lump in this fish's gullet, I'd say he died from an acute dose of indigestion. I think maybe we should conduct a little post-mortem. Oh, well, well. My darlings, your fishing days are over for a while. You won't mind if I hand these over to Dan Morrow, will you? What's the matter, Gloria? Are you mad at me? Oh, I get it. Hell has no fury like a woman scorned. Is that it? You see, darling, I couldn't very well take what you were offering so very generously. I knew I had to behave like a gentleman because you were going to be handed over to the U.S. Coast Guard. In fact, in the face of irresistible temptation, I really behaved like a saint. <laughs> 